Welcome back everybody to Flowchart Medicine. Today we'll be talking about a very interesting topic that is acute pericarditis. Now acute pericarditis is something that triggers a lot of terror amongst newly joint residents or newly joint interns because the patient usually presents with chest pain and when we do a ECG, the ECG shows a global ST elevation. So many students uh, wrongly diagnose it as a STEMI which uh, if we take a very good history from the patient and we know what exactly acute pericarditis is, it is very easy to differentiate it from MI. So let's take a deep dive into it. So what exactly is acute pericarditis? Acute pericarditis is basically inflammation of the pericardium. Now we all know that there are two layers of the pericardium, the outer pericardium and the inner pericardium. Now the inner pericardium is actually pain insensitive and is only involved in acute traumatic fever. So acute pericarditis usually involves the outer pericardium which is pain sensitive. So what exactly is the patient going to present us with? The patient is going to present us with chest pain. But this type of chest pain is going to be very different from the chest, from an anginal type of chest pain. How exactly? Because it is a sharp stabbing chest pain. Whereas in angina, it is a crushing type of chest pain. And here, the most important thing is that it is a pleuritic chest pain. Now, what many of you might not be knowing what exactly is pleuritic chest pain. So, pleuritic chest pain is when you ask the patient that whether or not uh, the pain increases on sneezing, coughing, uh, lying down or deep inspiration, the patient is going to respond to that with yes. So this is a very uh, key giveaway that whether or not the chest pain that the patient is suffering from is pleuritic chest pain or not. Now another thing is that the pain that the patient is having will increase on lying down supine and increase on swallowing whereas it will be relieved when the patient is leaning forward or sitting and now what exactly are the signs when you auscultate the patient you will be able to hear a pericardial rub now the pericardial rub is best heard in the left lower sternal border it is very high pitched triphasic in nature and leathery however it is best it is best heard when the patient is leaning forward with his hands on knee and holding his or her breath after a forceful expiration. Now this in itself is a paradox because when we will read about murmurs, we will learn that most of the murmurs increase when the uh, pathology increases. So basically, uh, on leaning forward, if the patient is uh, getting relieved in pain, the pericardial rub should decrease. But here, instead of that, the pericardial rub increases. So it is some sort of a paradox in itself. So the most important part of this uh topic is going to be the ECG. Now the ECG we must remember shows global ST elevation but it is concave in shape. Now I cannot stress this enough. A concave shape ST elevation that is global without any reciprocal changes is never MI. So I have even drawn it here. So you can see how it is a very smooth curve. So this concave shape ST elevation usually is nothing to worry about and after and if the patient comes back to you again and you again do a ECG and it shows a, a T wave depression. So that is a T wave depression or a T wave inversion that is also nothing to worry about. Now in acute viral pericarditis we will see global ST elevation that is concave in shape except in leads V1 and AVR. We will also see frequent PR depressions and no reciprocal changes. Now if you don't know what what reciprocal changes are basically if a patient is having inferior wall MI the ST elevation will be there in inferior wall leads that is 2, 3 and ABF but it will all but it will show reciprocal changes that is ST uh, depression in lead 1, AVL and other lateral leads. Similarly if a patient is having anterior wall MI the anterior wall leads are going to show ST, ST elevation but the inferior leads are going to show ST depression. So this is kind of changes are known as reciprocal changes and reciprocal changes are never seen in acute pericarditis. And there is also another sign known as spotic sign which is a TP segment depression. So what exactly are the causes of acute pericarditis? The most common cause is post viral infection and the most important virus that causes post viral myocarditis is Coxsackie virus. Another thing one must remember is that many students, especially in India, have the uh, thinking that any kind of pericardial disease is usually caused by tuberculosis, which is not true. Tuberculosis only causes pericardial effusion. It rarely causes pericarditis. So because of that also, I have mentioned that Coxsackie virus is always going to cause pericarditis more than tubercular virus. However, if we are talking about chronic constrictive pericarditis or if we are talking about pericardial effusion, then it is a different story. Then of course, in India, 
India, tuberculosis is going to be the most common cause. Then there is the post MI acute pericarditis. So post MI acute pericarditis is further divided into two types. There is the immediate post MI pericarditis. In this, you don't have to do much. You are already giving the patient aspirin, which has some sort of analgesic effect. We just increase the dose of aspirin. The other thing is Dressler syndrome. Now Dressler syndrome is post MI acute pericarditis that occurs two to six weeks after the MI. Then there can be trauma, uremia and drugs. Uh, among these, I, there are many drugs that can cause acute pericarditis, but I have read, written the six most common drugs that are known to cause acute pericarditis. They are procainamide, hydralazine, minoxidil, isoniazid, methyl dopa and anthracyclines. Anthracyclines basically include doxorubicin and donorubicin, which are used in AML, ALL and Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now there are a few tumors that can cause acute pericarditis which are mesothelioma, SCC of lungs and few autoimmune diseases also cause acute pericarditis. The major among them is SLE, Jorgen and most importantly IgG4 associated diseases. Now what exactly is the treatment? Now acute pericarditis is a very self-resolving type of disease but we must stop the inflammation process. The reason is that if any patient has frequent attacks of acute pericarditis, eventually it is going to lead to fibrosis of the pericardium and then the patient may develop chronic constrictive pericarditis. So most cases respond to NSAIDs, but we must use colchicin if a patient is having refractory acute pericarditis attacks. So colchicin is something that you must have also heard when we were reading about gout. So other things that we can be used as steroids are used in very selective cases azathioprine, IVIG or anakinra. Anakinra is basically anti-interleukin 1. A surgical pericardectomy for acute pericarditis is done very rarely but it is a, always an option if we suspect that the patient may develop chronic constrictive pericarditis. So that was the topic. Uh, I would like to thank you all for sticking this long with me and uh, if you like the video you can like the video please share and subscribe if you like my work and if you dislike the video you can press the dislike button and if you think there is any way that I can improve the video making you can comment down below also I have uh, I have the link of the hepatorenal syndrome video uh, in the first in the pinned comment you can check that out if you like this video thank you very much